The 1960s was a very, very exciting time for makeup. You had stars like Diana Ross, Elizabeth Taylor, Audrey Hepburn, Jean Shrimpton, Twiggy experimenting with bold colors, crazy eyelashes, and a really unique fresh take on makeup that was a rejection of the way that makeup was in the 50s. You guys may have heard of a brand called Revlon. You might have seen them in the drugstore, but Revlon's actually been around since 1932. I reached out to the brand and I got my hands on real vintage makeup ads from the 1960s and I have them right here. So I am going to use these as my guide, but before we get into the tutorial itself, I found the perfect person to educate us on the 1960s. His name is Peter Alamis, and he is going to give us a glimpse at what makeup was like in the 60s. So when did you start practicing hair and makeup styling? I started around 1960, late 64, early 65. Very beginning of a revolution. My first client at that time was Liza Minnelli. I did Jackie Kennedy Onassis hair and makeup for 16 years. Diana Ross, uh, Audrey Hepburn, Hey Donahue, I mean, there's so many. Women especially were so contrived in the 50s and early 60s. You fit into a mold. You copied your mom's habits of dressing and makeup and hair, and there was no uniqueness, individuality. Here's where it started changing, especially with makeup. Cleopatra was I knew you were going to say that. Cleopatra came out in 1963. Elizabeth Taylor's eye makeup was the rage of everyone. That eyeliner that she did, both top and bottom. The 60s was an experiment across the board. The political movement took a big toll on us because that youth demanded something different. We wanted independence. We didn't want to be in the war. We didn't believe in the political system. We were very creative, very uh, entrepreneurial and it, we were very excited. We wanted to change the world, starting with fashion. And it was an explosion of artistic expression and creativity. It was a youth-oriented era. Color was in. For the first time, we didn't have to be as conservative as muted colors back in the 50s. Now it's like, how loud can I be? How colorful can I be? And you had people like Mary Quant coming in and created the very short miniskirt. Vidal Sassoon created the structured, more angular bob look. Everybody was different, colorful, exciting. No one was boring in the 60s. The 1960s had a couple of different popular makeup looks. We decided to go with the mid 60s look. Honestly, it's the look that I think is the most exciting. So I don't have any foundation tutorials. So I've got a little bit of this Ben Nye color cake makeup. Gonna apply it with just this Milani brush. The youth movement back then wanted a clean complexion look. You use sheer powder most of the time. You use foundation in the evening if you were going out. They didn't want it overdone like their mothers used to do in the 50s. I have a blush ad. It shows, you know, a woman applying blush, like really just all over. Fresh young color, you fluff all over your face, cheeks, chin, every place. It looks like from the photo, the blush is placed on the apples up to the cheek and a little bit lower, almost like a contouring with blush kind of vibe, which I think is really pretty. So I have a blush from Revlon. This is in Rose Balm. A common theme you'll see throughout this tutorial, everything is supposed to be very soft. The blush is not supposed to be very visible. The foundation is supposed to be barely there. I don't know what the purpose of this is. Maybe it's only if like you're wearing an updo. So I have actually two advertorials. So both tutorials start off with the brows. So the 1960s, Revlon was coming out with its very first brush-on eyebrow powder. In theory, the brow powder was supposed to give you the precision of a pencil, but it's softer. So I'm gonna use this brow powder on my eyebrows. Ah! Then, highlighting the brow bone. So I'm gonna use this frosty white shade. Using a shimmery, very stark white shade on the brow bone was a very popular makeup technique. So I did the same to intensify the arch of my eyebrow and really give my face a lifted effect. 
Hello, well, it says a girl can't get anywhere these days without an eye school education. <laughs> anyway, I got distracted by the pun. Okay, you color and contour the eye with the brush on shadows. So I'm gonna use this Natasha Denona palette. I'm going to take a little bit of thorn. You would emphasize the crease, make it darker. So that's something that you started first with. Green and blue eyeshadow was really in at the time. So from the ad, it looks like it's kind of a jade green. I have more like evergreen shades, so I'm gonna mix a couple. Then it was time for eyeliner. Now Peter said that in the 1960s, liquid eyeliner pens were becoming popular. According to the Revlon ad, the goal here is to have the least obvious liner you've ever laid eyes on. Gently shined to play up the eyes for all they're worth. So, I went for a very, very, very thin line here. Nothing too obvious. Remember, we're going for something very, very soft. What really was in style was the lashes. You would just coat it and let it dry and coat it again and let it dry and then you try to spike it as much as possible with the tip of your mascara. Layer number two. While I'm waiting for the top lashes to dry, I'm going to draw kind of faux lashes on the bottom of my lash line. Take a pencil and create lashes underneath by carefully, very thinly, applying what appear to be lashes going from the inner to the outer corner, heavier on the outer corner underneath the eye. Another layer of waterproof mascara. Then I took Peter's advice, which actually is shown in the Revlon ad. I turned my mascara wand vertically and used it to really pull out and spike my lashes as a final step. All right, so I have some Ardell Dummy Wispies here and they're actually pre-cut we would trim the strip of that lash. We will go from short to long, trimming it first before applying it, and then snipping individual lashes. Blending them all together with a little bit more. To add a few finishing touches, the Revlon ad says to use a frosted shadow to draw tiny white lines on the inner and outer corners of the eyes to open everything up. So I took the white shimmery shadow that I used on my brow bone and applied that to my inner corner and the outer edge of my eye. So last but not least, lipstick. So I have this shade from Hourglass, it's called I Lust For, it's kind of a peachy nude. It's so skinny, I can literally put it in my nose. Lips were pale. It was all about the eyes. So I went for a peachy lipstick from Hourglass, making sure the finish was matte because that was the finish that was most readily available at the time. The 1960s was such an exciting time to be a makeup lover. All of a sudden, there were more colors, there were more textures. The biggest takeaway, at least for me from this, was getting a chance to speak with Peter, someone who actually lived through the decade and got to experience what was happening in makeup at the time, from what was going on politically to what was going on in London, to arts, culture, and entertainment. And the 1960s really did set the stage for what would happen in the 1970s and beyond. It was such an exciting time for finding yourself and identifying yourself and telling the world, this is who I am with my makeup, with my clothing, with my hair, like it or not, I don't give a damn. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Click here to subscribe to Refinery29 and click here to watch another video. Bye.